Welcome back everybody, it's Kathy Arbor here and today we're going to show a little haul that I just got. Um, this is gouache paint. Now I haven't ever used gouache. I like watercolor and acrylic. And so I've I ordered a few different brands to see what the difference was. Um, now, gouache paint, most illustrators will use it. It's very opaque and very matte finish. And you can get a regular gouache, which is water reactive. So when it dries, you can reconstitute it again by wetting it. And then there's also a acrylic gouache. And it's, I wanted to find out <laughs> what the differences were. So I haven't gotten those in yet. They'll be probably here next week. And I just thought I'd show you what I've got this so far. And gouache it can be very expensive. So this one is from our um, Canadian uh, art store here called Dessars. And they're a really awesome store. Free shipping. And... The prices are very good. Um, they, uh, we have Dessars and then we have Curry's art. And they both carry different things. So you can still get your typical popular brands like Golden, and um, Derwent, that type of thing. But some of them carry different brands that the other don't. And I find that... Um, Dessars carries a lot wider range of brands in different things. And these are these are um, Shinhan Professional Poster Color, they're called. It's a gouache, but they call it poster color. And they come in these little jars. And there's uh, many ounces, 40 milliliters per jar. So I bought six colors, so your primary is in a black and a white. And then we have here acrylic gouache, and this is a Canadian brand, um, Dars. Darcil? I don't know. I can't. There's the name. <laughs> this is a fairly new one to me. I didn't know about this one. I think it's a Dessars brand, though. So I thought I could try this. And this comes in a fairly large, it's 8.45 fluid ounces. Hey, Janet. So this is a good buy, because this, one of these... Is the same price as one of these. And you can get quite a few colors in these. So I thought I would try, this is acrylic and this is just your regular um, gouache. But I wanted to see what the differences were. Because I'm thinking if it's just the acrylic gouache, if it's just like a acrylic paint but just a matte finish, then what's the difference between this and, say, craft paint? Because craft paint has a matte finish, so I thought I'd try it out. And then they also had uh, gloss gel on sale, so I bought one of those. And they also had a big sale on uh, Fab uh, Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper, so I bought um, 10 sheets of that. And this is the Schmincke, um Acroel 
card. So I just wanted, I like getting these cards because then you can tell what the color really looks like. So if you're thinking of getting a, a particular type of um, watercolor or gouache, see if they have uh, color dots, cards, because then you can wet them and see them in person instead of trying to figure out if that's the real color on the um, screen on your computer. So it's a lot better to buy one of these for like um, $15, $20, depending on the size, than to buy a bunch of paint and find out you don't care for the color or the uh, consistency. So this one has 140 colors. So I thought we could check these out and see what they're like. Um, that, uh, they only are sold at the Dessars one uh, store, not at the Curry. Funny, Curry's doesn't have a whole lot in watercolor, which is odd. They have um, Golden, Daniel Smith, and Van Gogh, I think it is. Uh, but um, the Sars carries multiple brands. I also have some um, Windsor Newton coming and what was the other? Um, Holbein. Yeah, aren't the, the cards are great. So I thought we could check out, see what, what's, what's the big fuss with these? Now, you can put uh, the watercolor on pretty well anything. Or not watercolor, um, these gouache on anything. Okay, let's shake this one up. Get a paintbrush. So I don't know what the we'll see what what the differences are. <laughs> Sounds fairly watery, this one. I don't even know what the consistency should be. No, it's just a watery paint. So, have you got any of these um, paints? Let's put a line in of marker. So we can see what it will cover. my big one. Hmm. Okay. Let's put a little Hi Inspire Studios. Good to have you here. Hey Kathleen. We're just testing out some different brands of gouache. So I want to see what the differences are and if I'm even going to like gouache. So I didn't get a whole lot. I just got a, a primary set of a few brands. And they were all on sale. So I thought it was a good time to test it out. Okay, so that is your it does go on really nice it's nice and smooth it does show through a little bit though and let's try a red in the acrylic gouache hi Brenda 
These are nice because they come in a squirt bottle, so you could put them out on a dish or pallet of some sort. So we'll just put a little dab. Now these are thicker. They're about the same um, opaqueness as the other. I don't know if any of you guys have tried these particular Poster color by um, Shinhan Professional Gouache. It's very small writing. It's supposed to be a gouache, so we'll see. This was another gouache, acrylic gouache, by a Canadian brand. Um, what's the dot for? Light fastness of four on this one. Clean with water. Ultra matte when dry, it says. Now this, if this is really good, this is even cheaper than your craft paint. These were, these were, let me see. It's my invoice. Does it give a price? No, it doesn't. Uh, I believe these were $6 for eight fluid ounces, a little over eight fluid ounces. So the golden ultra matte is really expensive and you only get a little wee jar and it costs something like $10. So this might be a way to go if you want something really, really ultra matte. You haven't tried gouache yet? I haven't either and I thought I really love the look of people that do the gouache. Um, let's see, what other color? Let's try a yellow, see what this, how yellow you can, yellow and reds are usually a fairly transparent color. Anyways, so. Let's shake this one up a bit. I believe Liquitex also has um, a gouache too, but it seems great because you can reuse it like water. Yeah, some. Um, the regular gouache, but not the acrylic gouache. So it depends what you're wanting as far as an application. If you want to reconstitute the gouache, then just get your plain gouache. Um, if you don't like that, then you get your acrylic gouache. If, if um, you're looking for something that's very matte. So I just thought I'd try these out because I was curious and they were on sale. So these go on really, really nice. Um, we'll have to try our whites too. It's yellow here. A smidge. Yeah, that's about the same. The only difference is one's acrylic and one is not. Then we'll see what uh, white looks like. 
I like the bottles. They were thinking when they did that. Some of them, they, they're not really... This is really opaque. The white's really opaque, a little more than the other, because that's interesting. So let's see what this. Okay, so hmm, this one's a little less concentrated as far as pigment. Shin Han is more pigmented, I think, in the white, anyways, or whatever the um, filler is. All right, so I think Shin Han is very pigmented for. Uh, so that's the Shin Han, this one and this one. And this one is the Shin Han, and this is the Desars. As far as um, the, they're about the same, I would say, as far as matte. I don't really see, uh, I think the Shin Han is just a tad more matte than the other but hardly enough to to really uh, make a difference so as far as oh, it's not dry enough let's dry it Yeah, I'll dry it and then I'll try it on the red and the, see what happens with the white. Well, that's interesting. It almost seems to... Once it's completely dry, it gets even more matte. That's really interesting. Wow. Look at this. It's almost completely covered. After it's dry completely, it gets more matte and more opaque. That's really interesting. So the Shin Han is very, very um, opaque. It doesn't look like it, but once it's dry, it's very opaque. See, there's the white. It's almost completely huh that's that's really interesting so let's put um, the white over top of the red and this is the Shin Han make sure 
no water in my brush. I don't want too much water. Yeah, if you keep working it, it does come up. But if you just give it one brush, it doesn't. So, let's see what the white in the acrylic does. That's pretty good. Are they chalky? Um, they're well. I don't know what you mean by chalky. Like they they go on like butter. They're very smooth. They don't. The brush doesn't drag at all. It's not speckled in any way. I'll see how it does mix with, it reconstitutes the color so you can't go over it too many times. So that's something to consider. Um, but it does cover really well. Um, they feel they they feel like a, a a mat. It's not really rough though, but it is like a a mat feel to it. I wouldn't call it chalky though. I don't think. But very good coverage of the Shin Han. Um, when I get the other two brands, I'll try those. They'll probably be next week that I'll get those in. And uh, we'll play with them all then and see what what's the big deal. <laughs> uh, these are, I like these. They do, they are very matte. These would be very similar to, um, like they leave a film. Um, I would say it's very similar to craft paint. So let's try that and see if we can put any pencil crayon over top. Uh, tempera to me feels very very chalky that's the one paint that I can see feeling chalky these don't um, and when it's actually when this is the second layer is on it's very smooth feeling um, let's try some uh, white okay that's interesting so the tempera, or not the tempera, the um, Shinhan doesn't, it's a little harder to put a pencil, but the other, um, the acrylic gouache takes pencil really well. Interesting. Let's try a black. Or blue. Okay, the black. Hmm. 
Yeah. So the black, uh, the pencil, this is the Shinhan, and this is the acrylic. The matte acrylic takes pen colored pencil really well. So if you're going to want to use colored pencil with it, that would be fantastic. So very similar to the uh, So Flat um, Core, or not Core, um, Golden uh, New Acrylic called So Flat. But these are a whole lot cheaper. So these are very similar to, in my opinion, very similar to um, acrylic paint because it doesn't have the opacity. Um, I think that, wait a minute. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so here's the opacity. So this is... Uh, um, transparent, semi-transparent, and opaque. So this black has got a line under the opaque. The yellow we used was semi. So depending on the colors, the red is also semi. Let's try this. This one's um, the blue, the primary cayenne. So we'll try that and see how dark it is. or not dark. Let's put a line with my, where did I put my, okay, where did I put my thing? So let's try both the blues. See, take some water out of that brush first. And we'll see if it um, dries. Opaque or not. And the blue. I found the Shinhan was actually the cheaper way to go because you get more in a bottle than those tiny little tubes. Okay, it seems to be a little more opaque. So it must be the, the colors depending on the uh, opaqueness. Let's dry these and see what happens. is so cool. The more it dries, the less opaque it gets. It's almost like magic. That is so cool. So it gets very opaque the more it dries. So it depends how much of an opaqueness you want. That's cool. And you don't need a lot on your brush because it's, um, it's, it's more liquidy. It's interesting. A lot of artists have used it. Jackson's Pollock and... Um... Yeah, have used gouache. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of artists that use have used these. Well, not particularly these in particular, but... Um, to...
Inspired Studios. Have a good day. So that was uh, what we're doing. Testing. And I thought I would just take a look at some of these um, dock cards. I don't own... Oh, yes, I do. I own a few <laughs> of the... Uh, the new ones that came out, the Schminky. There's some interesting colors in here. They do reconstitute quite nice. Make sure you have a uh, very clean brush when you're doing yellows. I'll just do a few and then I'll start the painting that I was going to do. That I, This just came before I went on, so I thought I'd show you. Ooh, that's a nice color. Just randomly pick some. These are always fun to do. I don't mind doing these. I hate, I don't know why, but I don't like making my own swatches. There's some awesome, really, wow, that one's really reactive. Look at these. Those are going to be fun. So. These are great. I'm, I'm really impressed with these if you like something that reactivates. I do like these as far as having a matte medium finish. So these would be good for if you're planning on using... Um, well, actually, let's see. Yeah. The colored pencil goes on these. See the difference? The colored pencil, there must be more tooth to this than this. That's the Shinhan and that's the uh, acrylic wash. So interesting. So we'll see what the other ones are like when we get when I get them in. Do you think it fried faster than acrylic? Dried faster, you mean? Um, yeah, a little bit. It did. Um, it to the <coughs> excuse me to the touch. It did. 
but that's the thing. It looked like it was dry. It felt like it was dry, but when I put the heat gun to it, it got more opaque. So I think you have to let it sit a little bit longer than you think. The sheen goes off almost instantly. And it would depend on, you know, the paper that you're using too. If you, watercolor or Bristol or just plain paper. Yeah, they, um, I, I haven't seen them anywhere else. Just at Desars carries them. Um, I don't know if you guys can get them or not anywhere else. Those are the uh, Shinhan. I imagine Jackson's art would carry these, maybe. They're and they they call them poster color instead of uh, gouache, but they're they're listed under the gouache. And they're they're uh, the pigments are all uh, put in like the PW six and um, let's see. No, no, that's the number of the pigment. There's quite a few colors you can get in these too. Um, this is not to put them on well cloth and fabric. Well, that's just yeah. Yeah, so check them out. I found them to be the the better buy as far as uh, gouache. Because the uh, gouache, like this is the most expensive gouache. The designer gouache by Windsor & Newton. I've just got one um, white one here, actually. Let's just try this for a minute. Well, I since I have it here. This is just a uh, regular gouache, designer gouache. Let's see what it does over top of the blue. So this reacts to So it's about the same, I would say. So it reacts. But I would say it's pretty well the same as uh, Shinhan. Shinhan is easier to put on. It's because of the watery consistency of it. It's interesting. And one of these tubes, this is uh, 14 mil, is 10 bucks. And this here is 40 mil. <laughs> so there you go. The acrylic one dried fairly quick too, Kathleen, like really fast. So if you want something that does dry really quick, I would probably even use these for acrylic painting, to tell you the truth. If you want a really matte finish, these would be great. And they're cheap. A whole lot cheaper. I don't know if you can get these in um, the U.S. or anywhere else. It's a Canadian company. All right, so I have this um, jelly print um, paper. This is just a paper that I tried to do a transfer from a magazine, and this one didn't work, but I kept it because I can use it. So don't throw out your fails. You can always create something on top of it. 
So I thought we could uh, just make a, a quick uh, geranium flower here, maybe against the background of a fence or something. And uh, geraniums are really easy to do if you want to start off painting flowers. So I have, I think I'll put a fence in first. And I want, let's see, a burnt umber. And I'm just going to use craft paint. Burnt umber. And what else? Maybe. A little bit of Payne's Gray, I think, also. A little Payne's Gray. And some yellow light. For now, and we'll play with this a bit. And I'm gonna use the background to my advantage. So, oh, maybe some white too. Did I bring out, yep. I'm just going to use a big brush for this. What I'm going to do is put in the highlights. Because this is already dark, I want something a little bit lighter for the fence color. So fence, like an old fence type of thing. So I'm just going to mix in a little bit. Let's see, our fence will start here. We'll have I'm just mixing these colors a little bit at a time. A little burnt umber, a little white, just going up and down. This is a hard bristle brush. and make it look like an old fence. So we'll separate it in a minute. I'm not worried too much about um, going too far down the page because that, that's where some of the leaves will be for the hydrangea. So you just put it on until you like it, basically. You want it streaky. You can leave parts of it. Because this is just paper, I'm going to dry it.
leave it with a chiseled edge, a flat brush, because I want to put um, the top part in here. So I'm going to just take some of these colors again. But this time I'm going to distinguish where the top is. Now I'm going to darken some of these areas with the Payne's Gray. So just the plain Payne's Gray in between the boards. And then you can just take some of that and just lightly dry brush some of it down onto your boards also. A little bit of the white in there. Same thing. Sometimes you'll see the little saw marks in the old boards, rough sawn boards. We'll put some of that in. Maybe you have a few cracks happening. Just make it all gnarly looking. bit of that brown umber and a little bit I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of that brown with a little bit of the yellow in it just to lighten that brown up a bit more of a light woody color just here and there maybe it's worn maybe it's got some a little bit of moss on it lighten it up you Usually it's um, a little bit lighter on the top. You'll find. Just from the sun and whatnot. Hey Jilly, good to see you. I'm being no 
notified of another window up. Oh, geez. <laughs> they come at the most in, un, unpopular time. Wait, do they not realize we're doing art? <laughs> then you can take a liner brush and let's put some of this. We'll make some uh, darker lines here. Maybe a few cracks in the wood. Sometimes you're your wood starts to crack along the top. You don't have to do this. I just like putting old cracks and stuff like that in. I think it looks neat. You can make it whatever you want. A new fence, picket fence, whatever. You really don't need a any kind of a pattern for this. All fences are different, so just go with it. Have fun. Make something up. Even put a knot in it. Maybe this is a knot. So just a circle. dry that up and then we'll get out our filbert um, paintbrush is a round top brush. I'm put that little one. So like this. It's got the round type brush. It comes you can get them in all kinds of sizes. Um, 
think the, I think I'll try and use this one. This looks to be about half inch, depending on how big you want your flowers. It will depend on um, the size of your brush. So I'm going to put this away and take out a new palette. And this time I want some white. in there, I guess. And I want, um, this is deep periwinkle. You could also use a phthalo blue, um, ultramarine blue, and then a magenta I want. I'm going to make these kind of um, the purpley blue ones that you see. And I want some green, so kind of a limey green. If you can't, if you don't have lime green, you can get this one. It's like a light foliage green, and we'll mix a little bit of yellow with it. And we want some darker green. This is a Husser dark green, so it's kind of on a blue tinge to it. It's a little bit different. But deep color and yellow. And I'm going to get another just to do some mixing in. clear one so you can see colors more, a little better. And where did I go? There it is. Okay, so. What you want to do, uh, we'll have shading because the, it's a f uh, mop head, so it's kind of a rounded looking um, bunch of flowers on the top of a stem but because there's so many flowers in there you kind of want to make a shadowed area so we can actually take some of that ultramarine or no no it was uh, Payne's gray and actually I think I will we'll just use this so I'm gonna use this so the Payne's gray you can add a little bit of the um, umber with it and pick an area where you're gonna put your I'm gonna put right here so I'm just gonna dab make a really dark area there and I'm gonna put another one here so nice big area okay I want to dry that. Now, because the flowers are going to overlap some of the leaves, we can put a few of the leaves in too. Um, we can probably use the same brush also, or maybe a flat. Yeah, we'll use a flat shader or... This is a shader. And we'll put in some dark green first. And let's put, let's say there's going to be, I'm going to put a little bit of that lighter green on the corner. And I'm just going to mix that a little bit. 
And then I'm just gonna go out like that, just squiggle, and then I think I'm just gonna have like that dark area here. Not getting too detailed. So take advantage of the shape of your brush when you're doing some of these. Because a lot of times it, it works out to your advantage. Let's see. It's less painting. Um, could probably maybe one in here. So I'm I'm keeping the lighter side up. So that's the sun coming down or the light will be coming down. So you'll have a bit of a light look to it. Um, I'm also going to put in a stem. Just so I don't have to paint in between flowers. If we're going to have any stems with leaves on it, think about that now. So I think I'm going to put that in there. Um, I have to put them all in, but definitely around here, around where the flower is going to be. <laughs> no thanks, Kathleen. Got any questions or any anything you need to know? Just let me know. All right. So now let's get back to the flower. So we got the filbert brush, the rounded, it's almost the shape of the end of a petal. So the trick to this is, um, I think we need to put in a few green, bright green areas, kind of just here and there on the inside. I think that should, uh, Just a few, more or less in the center areas. Just a few. Don't worry if it doesn't look right. You can cover it up with flowers. Now the um, hydrangeas usually have four to five petals in their um, flower. So when you're making that, let me get a piece of paper. I'll just show you on this paper here for a minute. There's different ways of making the strokes. So you always want to load your brush with a couple colors. So I have blue and I also have that um, fuchsia pink color. Um, you can start off with just one, but what I like to do is you can flatten and then just bring it up. Flatten and bring it up. For, or you can also use the side of your brush. And make sure you have enough paint. 
so you can use the side it gives you a different mark you can add a little bit of white to the end of your of your uh, color and that will also give you a different look sideways it might be a little bit you're looking at the side view of it instead of straight on. Don't make them all the same straight on because then it, it doesn't look as realistic as it could be. So sometimes there's only a few petals. Just have fun with it. Just triple dip or single dips, whatever. The more you have on your brush, the more streaking you'll get. So don't mix your colors on your palette before you put it on. So I like using that streaky effect. Okay. So I, and you will, because we're putting it on a fairly dark background you want a lot on your paintbrush. So we can start off with, let's start off with some fairly dark ones, uh, more pink. You can put a little bit of the blue in and I'm going to start off um, at the back I think. And I'm just Like I said, don't make them all the same. They will be different. And then change up your colors, add a little white, or because they are quite different. Make some smaller by um, applying less pressure on your brush. But your tip of your brush should be on the outside of the petal, not the inside of the flower. If that makes sense to you, hopefully. And you can go right over top of uh, ones you've already done. You should have some light and dark though. Don't make them all the same color. They are quite different. And you'll probably see um, lighter ones at the very um, top of the bunch. Don't cover it all completely. We want to leave a little bit of that uh, black showing through. Continue on this one. If you want to, you can also just practice first. If you're not too sure you're going to be able to do this, just practice on a separate piece of paper until you get it right. Sometimes it does take a little bit of practice of, of doing these strokes. But once you get used to it, it's endless what you can do.
these are fun to do. Yeah, this is very similar also if you wanted to make um, geraniums. Would be done this way. Also, uh, uh, lilac. Cosmos, if you have a really big brush, would be cool. Those details make the painting. This is what I. Um, well, thanks, Barrel Hawker Designs. There. See, just a little bit. That's a lot. Now we can go in and make the little details in some of the flowers. So you can take the end of your paintbrush if you wanted to and just dip in some yellow and um, greens. Mix up the colors if you want. You could use a liner brush if you wanted to. Don't put too many in though because um, you can make it look um, too spotty. Just certain ones, because you wouldn't see the the insides of all of them. Only, only a few. So sometimes less is more. that and then I start putting more in. <laughs> it's just a little bit of dabs. That's all you need. So now you see why we did some of the leaf. Because we wouldn't want to have to go over top of that. Alright, so now let's dry that and then we can add more leaves in now. Um, the paint I'm just using um, Americana craft paint. Um, and there's fuchsia, there's periwinkle deep, uh, husser green, white, light foliage green. This shows the benefits of acrylic paint over watercolor, being able to go over the darker colors. Yes, 
Um, yeah, acrylics, you can, doesn't matter how you put it on. You can always paint over it. Um, depending on, you can do glazes though. Like, I find you can do a whole lot more with acrylics than watercolor. I do love the look of watercolor though because it's very difficult to get that soft um, wet on, wet into wet look with acrylics. You can do it, but it takes a lot of practice. Okay, so let's get our big brush again, so our shader brush, and let's put some more of these leaves in. So I'm going to take that Husser Green and we can decide how we want them. Um, we can just put a few in or we can add a little bit of that. Depending on how you how much detail you want in your leaves will depend on how much work you want to do. Uh, let's see, put a nice big one here so I can overlap my uh, There's different ways of doing leaves too. Um, okay, let's put one here. So you can just base coat it with a dark color. You could make a jaggedy edge if you want with your side of your brush. And we'll let that dry and then go back in. Uh, let's put maybe one in here. Play with your brush. That's how you learn. So if, if you take yellow and the dark green on either side and then take your palette and blend it in, you can use that to your benefit. So if I wanted a highlight, that top part of a folded leaf, and then you can still get that. So play with your um, paints and your, you might find certain colors you like together for leaves. This is a really cool way of doing um, fall leaves also. You need a fair amount of paint on your brush though. Especially if you're going over top of uh, quite a bit of dark colors. So it's just a wiggle. Let's see if you can 
see this. So I got my colors, just blend it in. Make sure you got enough on your brush. And this light part is on the outer edge and I'm just wiggling it. And then I flip my brush and I do the same thing. Then you can take your brush with the light part and just go down the center if you want. Sometimes I take a um, script liner and just do that for the Do this one over. Not quite bright enough for my liking. Hey, Zandra. Good to see you. And I bought a bunch of gouache <laughs> because of you. Thought I'd try some. I got a few different ones. Just to try the differences between them. Uh, this, it's not gouache that I'm using right now, but this is just uh, acrylic paint. And I found the, uh, I don't know if you guys can get them, the Shin Han acrylic gouache. I think I'm going to put some le um, vines in here too. No, I haven't gotten my book. It still says it hasn't shipped. I'm really disappointed. And I even contacted her, and she says she has no control over it. Like, I don't understand that. But, uh, yeah. It's kind of disappointing. Yours, you, oh, I love the blue ones. <laughs> um, you must have a lot of acid in your soil for the blue. You have more alkaline, you have pink in your soil. Oh, you got some too, Jilly? Awesome. We can... Uh, See what we think about it. Okay, I'm going to do some smaller, well, they could be the same, I guess. Smaller leaves. Maybe these ones have a different background. Or could also put a few. Um, If it's fall, they might have a different color on them. Sometimes they have a little bit of a pink edge. Let's see.
to do these a little bit different. A little more of the Just playing. This is how you find out different things by playing. You like the lace hydrangeas? Yeah, they're pretty. Dad there. Okay, I'm going to take my strip, um, script liner. Get a fairly light color. Put some veining in them. Maybe a little white. Like I said, this is just to play, to practice. I haven't done these in a while, so it's fun to just to see what you can do. Because when you don't do this enough, you just do it every once in a while, you'll find you lose your um, knack for it. You have to kind of reteach yourself a little bit. Play with it. 
see what you can do. Maybe you want, I don't know, curly cues in it. Let's put a few of those in. Let's see. Add a few more dots. Might see some stem. Play. All right. Oh, you did one? I'll have to go and see it. Did you post it, Kathleen? I'd love to see it. I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter... back or uh, edge to the just a smidge just light 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 touch I should have done this before but I didn't but you can just add a few little dabs There we go. So it's more of a, this is more of a, hmm, I don't know, one stroke <laughs> painting type of thing. It's not your typical detailed, um, it's a quicker way of doing something. It's, it's fun though. So play with, play with your stuff to see what you can do with your brush strokes. Oh good, I'll check it out, Kathleen. I'm I follow you, so I'll I'll uh, see what I can find. Um, that could be a star. Well, I think I don't know what that is, <laughs> but it's just on a piece of jelly print that didn't work out, and you practice on them. See what you can do. Now these are um, could all be redone if you didn't like the leaves. You can paint right back on top of them until you get them the way you want. Um, you show more than one way to do it. Yeah, there's there's multiple ways. Um, Xander, if you're still here. I'm painting a long castle. Sure. Oh, good. Awesome, Jilly. Uh, there's the Shin Han. Uh, let's see. They're called uh, poster color, but they're under gouache. Oh, you, it's in silver. It's kind of hard to see, but it's Shin Han gouache paint called poster color. And um, we did a test on them. Where did I put it? With, I also have these uh, acrylic gouache. The Shin Han is your reactive um, 
typical gouache that you get. You can reactivate it. This is the acrylic gouache, and this one is new in Canada. I don't know if you guys can get that. Um, but anyways, there's the two brands, and we found that um, the Shinhan, when you put uh, when you put it down, it doesn't look like it's covering because we put it over top of black marker and it didn't look like it was covering it that much. And then the longer it dries, the more matte and the more opaque it gets. It's very, it's, it was really cool. So I actually took a, a dryer and dried it and you could see it disappear, the black uh, marks behind it. So it, even though it didn't look wet, it was still drying. So you have to make sure you dry it. Um, but we did find that you couldn't put, well you can, but it doesn't mark as darker with colored pencil, the Shinhan. But the acrylic one, this one, did. It took pencil really well. So if, if you can get these, these are very similar to the uh, golden, what is it called, so flat acrylics, and they're a whole lot cheaper. These are, I believe, um, $6 for 8 ounce, over 8 ounces, 8.5 ounces, whereas the... Um, so flat, so you get one of these for ten bucks. So these are a lot um, cost effective too, because you're getting forty mils of this. It's very watery too, and I thought, oh, this isn't going to cover, but it does. Look how it jiggles. Very watery but it covers once it's dry. It's really unusual. I've never seen paint do that before. Usually when you put it down, you that's what you get. You can If you can see through it, you can see through it. But as, as it dried, it got more opaque. <laughs> it was really neat. So if you're going to, and you get, I think there's 96 colors of these. These are about, I can't remember. They were on sale. Um, I think Jackson Arts had had these too. But they were a whole lot cheaper than the tube. This is uh, 14 mil. And this was 10 bucks. And I believe this was 8. And you get 40. So just, uh, yeah. I'm getting uh, a couple other ones coming probably either tomorrow or next week. And we'll test those art out. And those will be the Wenzer Newton Designer Gouache and Holbein, I believe it was. So we'll try those out too, see what they're like. All right, so I think I'll just put this on a piece of paper. I don't want to waste it. Um, so, I hate wasting paint, but let's see. You could also put, keep a jelly plate out and use that. Or, uh, let's see. Let's see what I got here. I haven't got any other papers. Let's put it on. Oh, another thing I did get too. Um, I should try it out. Was wet wet strength tissue. Have you guys ever heard of that? I'd never heard of it. 
apparently you can get it in the um, it's, you can get it quite easily in United or er, the UK. I can't remember where I saw someone using it. It was a while ago. Um, so I thought, well, that's interesting. And they can paint on it and it won't rip. It's tissue. And they could also um, print on it. So I did get some. It's expensive because I had to get it from the United States had it. We couldn't get it on the Amazon here in Canada. So I wanted to try printing on it and, and um, painting on it. And it does feel different. So I'm going to keep that. Actually, I'm going to fold it, get some texture on it. This is uh, Deli. And we'll let that dry. Um, where is that? There. So this comes in, you can get different um, amounts. They're large sheets. And um, I'm just going to, fairly hard to tear too. It also, it kind of reminds me of, um, Oh, what they call it? Um, that Japanese paper, Gampy paper. I'm wondering if it's similar. Um, very, very light. Very, very. Um, on one side, it's very matte. And on the other side, it's shiny. Let's see, this is an old. So if we put some paint, paint on it, let's put some of this. Um, gouache on it. Leftover gouache. So this is the shiny side. It doesn't buckle. No buckling. So that would be good for jelly printing. So if we write on it with a marker, let's see. Let's get it. This is still the shiny side. So that's a Sharpie marker. It doesn't look like it went through. It hasn't gone on to this paper at all. Now let's dry it. No buckling.
you've seen tissue paper like this? So this is the um, matte side. It went through a little bit. Not much though. Okay, so let's see. Must have a grain to it. Yeah, it's got a grain to it. So if I take this and matte medium and put some matte medium on it, let's see if it'll disappear. So we'll put it over top of this here, see how much it disappears. Put some on the bottom. into the I'm gonna test this out I'm gonna see what this does will it come up more Depending on the uh, which side. It's easy to lift. Look at that. You can lift it when it's wet. That's cool. Look at that. It just disappears right in. You can't tell where that ends. It totally disappears. That's cool. So you could actually write on it, stamp words on it. Now I used matte medium. If you were to use gloss, it would probably come out even clearer, but that's pretty darn good. And my water is dirty, so that's that's really cool. Can you DM me a link later? Yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of people are... Um, well, not a lot of people. I think there was one lady, she used it. Jelly printing, I think? I can't remember. And printing words and stuff like that. She used it for stamping, and then she was able to stamp, put it on. 
Um, but that's printing. You could print words and use it. But uh, it is a little expensive for us in Canada because we can't get it but um, in the States, so it costs a bit. But in the UK, it's a lot cheaper. But yeah, I'll, I'll uh, leave a link for you. But it's something you wouldn't use, you know, you could do a lot of tracing if you wanted to draw on this since it's not, it doesn't tear. So you could actually draw a face from a magazine if you wanted to and then just glue it onto your canvas if you wanted a face or something. If you don't want to draw stuff for yourself you know because uh tissue paper you can do it but you can still see that the that it's um tissue paper where this seems to disappear quite easily and just the fact that it doesn't buckle is awesome it's very strong It doesn't, it, that's not going through. So if you're drawing on the shiny side, it doesn't seem to go through. That's interesting. So, I think that's it for me today. And there's the uh, awesome, <laughs> that was fun. I enjoy doing those. Uh, so I hope you try it. Give it a go and and uh, put it up on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you do social media, and uh, link me, and I'd love to see it. So I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you Tuesday, and have a great weekend. Bye for now, everybody.